Right. Uh, so, hello everyone. My name is Sebastian, and today I'm going to be presenting um, this topic about detecting denial of service vulnerabilities caused by gas limits um, using fuzzing and other techniques. But we're not just going to stop at detecting, we're also going to be looking into how to generate exploits and uh, fixes for these uh, vulnerabilities. This is joint work together with uh, Professor Vijay Ganesh from the University of Waterloo, um, as well as uh, the group of his PhD students working on smart contract security. So um, probably most of you already know this, but I created the presentation for general public. So not, not assuming that everyone, uh, everyone knows about smart contracts, they're just, programs executed on a virtual machine, the Ethereum virtual machine, and um, calling a function in a smart contract changes the state of the EVM. And these changes, uh, these state changes often uh, involve uh, transfers of funds and so on. Programs, of course, might contain bugs, any type of program. So therefore, smart contracts also contain probably bugs. And exploiting these bugs in smart contract can lead to stolen or frozen funds, as we've seen many times uh, in the past. On the other hand, there's the notion of gas. Uh, uh, the EVM has this uh, gas mechanism, which uh, charges the function callers, so the transaction senders and execution fee, uh, which is um, um, computed using gas price times gas consumed. And there is a block gas limit for each block that is mined. And the gas consumed by um, any function call in a transaction cannot surpass this block gas limit. If it does, the transaction is reverted. And this um, is meant to prevent uh, resource abuse and denial of service attacks on the Ethereum network. However, it can cause denial of service attacks at the smart contract level by, by uh, not allowing a user to uh, call the function and fully execute it. So this could lead to, to frozen funds and uh, frozen funds are basically lost funds. Here's a toy example. Um, and here's, uh, th this is something which you could naively implement if you're not familiar with uh, solidity or gas, gas issues uh, in Ethereum. Basically, you want to um, reward all the users of a certain bank, let's say, and um, you want to push out interest payments every month or every year. And you, to do that, you basically iter iterate over all users and you do some computation based on how much balance or how much deposit they have and how much time uh, they have kept their deposit there. And um, you basically send them this interest. Now you notice that this uh, users.length is controlled or influenced by users joining this bank, right? So the more users you have, the more iterations this for loop is going to have. And um, if it gets out of, like if it, if it at some point passes the block gas limit um, is going to cause the transaction to revert. And if there's no other way to push out interests, it basically is going to lead to a lot of unhappy users of this bank and um, other problems. So that's the basic idea. Uh, more famous example. Uh, are you still with me? Oh, you broke up. Um, okay. And you seem to be frozen, so I can s still see your screen. Okay. Oh, uh, where where did you lose me? Um, yes, point? exactly. Uh, now I can see the screen again. Perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah, that was the slide, and you said a more famous example. <laughs> okay. So, a more famous example is this project called Governmental. And uh, it's from 2016, and they um, suffered for some time due to this kind of uh, block gas limit. So there was a denial of service uh, for 
for the payout of the jackpot, which was 1,100 ETH, um, because the payout mechanism was using too much gas. And um, a part of this, as part of this paying payout mechanism, the the contract was clearing internal storage using these instructions. And this was compiling to something that iterates over um, storage locations and delete them, deletes them one by one. And because the list was too long, it reached that the block gas limit at that point in time, and um, that led to frozen funds. So this is this is the source where I took this information from, this Reddit post. And of course, like back in 2016, the the block gas limit was um, uh, quite lower uh, as than it is today so uh, it was uh, under 5 million and today it's uh, 10 million uh, as we see it, it keeps uh, evolving it keeps growing with some exceptions um, most of the time the, the, the block gas limit is increased uh, at a certain hard fork and the motivation for this work that we're doing and trying to detect and, and exploit this automatically um, is because there's simply too many um, accounts and also smart contracts on the Ethereum network to try to uh, do this manually and uh, find this out. So we, we're basically during our audits, even today, we're seeing a lot of uh, gas usage issues in the, in the smart contracts. And um, using state-of-the-art tools um, like uh, Slither or MyFrill, you can detect these, these issues. It's, it's pretty easy to detect. Uh, you basically look for loops and uh, some computations or function calls in those loops. And there's many tools freely available that, that find this uh, issue. However, what do you do once you detect them, right? Um, one thing you can do is uh, try to, to remove the loops and, and redesign your code such that um, you completely avoid loops and you just try to accumulate values as other functions are called. However, if that's not an option, you can just maybe do a gas analysis to determine when exactly the, uh, the error, the out of gas error occurs and you can add something like a required statement or an assert statement to basically prevent uh, the revert from happening and prevent the waste of gas. And this is uh, currently a manual, potentially lengthy and uh, tedious process. So the solution which we propose in, in this work is to automatically generate these kind of uh, denial of service exploits that lead to out of gas at smart contract level. There's uh, several challenges. Uh, the first one, um, is like how do you determine the exact gas usage uh, during execution? Second one is uh, how do you search for these through the, the large search space of uh, possible inputs to, to functions? Um, there could be functions that have several parameters or even like there could be multiple functions that need to be called in order to reach a state where this kind of uh, DOS um, or out of gas error is reached. So the first uh, challenge is actually um, easy to solve due to uh, Web3 and uh, Solidity features. Uh, we're, in our approach, we use the gas left function from Solidity. Um, and uh, we, we basically simulate everything on top of um, uh, the, the Ganache uh, network, I mean, the, the Ganache tool. And the second challenge is, uh, more, um, I'm going to talk more about that one. So fuzzing a large number of inputs uh, is, is more tricky. There's several possible fuzzing heuristics. Uh, for instance, you can brute force every possible um, input, and that's very slow. You can do a divide and conquer approach, which is faster, but it's not always applicable if you don't have certain uh, rules like um, integer intervals and so on that you can easily divide and, and uh, um, into partitions. We're basically, for this, for our approach, we're using reinforcement learning, which is also fast and is, is more generally applicable. And we'll see in a second why. There's also possible other possible heuristics. Um, not saying this is the best one, but this is the one we, we chose for our project. 
So the reinforcement learning approach, um, it looks like this. We, we basically model the problem as a Markov decision process, uh, where we say that the set of states, uh, S, is all of the states of the EVM. Basically, we're just, a state is a state of the EVM. Um, the possible set of actions is um, calling smart contract function with some randomly chosen inputs or also um, like more carefully chosen inputs, increasing those inputs, decreasing them, uh, and so on. So these are like the actions that uh, the agents, the reinforcement learning agents can take. Uh, the probability of transitioning from one state to another when basically when executing a given action is is always uh, one hundred percent because uh, the EVM is deterministic, and the the interesting part is the reward function. Uh, basically, the the reward that the agent gets when he transitions to a state S is uh, one minus uh, the division between the the gas left and the block gas limit, and this is because we're rewarding actions that are going to uh, consume more gas. You know, so if if the transaction that led to the state S uh, used more gas, uh, we're going to give a higher reward because we want to reach an out of gas error. So this is pretty uh, intuitive. Here's a simple example um, of a pure function that just receives um, value as input, an integer value as an input, and it iterates uh, over all integer values from zero to that number sums them up and returns the sum. The goal of the uh, reinforcement uh, learning agent would be here to find uh, the right value for n, which leads to this kind of out of gas error. And we're going to see later how this uh, code is fixed. Another example is uh, maybe a slightly different function, still pure function that um, has two parameters and, or like you can even think about more parameters, but basically you, you do some computations with these parameters and they don't always influence uh, the result or like the, the gas usage in the same way. So here you can see that we're dividing uh, N by M. So the goal of the reinforcement learning agent is to find a large value for N and a small value for M but M should not be zero because otherwise it leads to a division by zero. And um, what are the, the sort of the right values for this or, or like what, what's, um, or maybe something else we're gonna see later, uh, what's the right way to fix this? Uh, here's another example where there's a small contract that uh, is vulnerable. It has several entries, in, uh, integer entries in them. Uh, in it and uh, it has several functions and the first function just adds an entry um, in the list oh, I, saw, I saw a typo there uh, the second function um, gets the, the entry at a certain location and the third function sums up the uh, list of entries basically um, returning the sum so here um, you can see that um, the goal is to find a trace of function calls like this, uh, basically adding several entries up to n and summing them up. And the question is, what's the value of n such that uh, when you call some of some entries, it leads to a block uh, an out of gas uh, error. So the the challenge is how to to determine like. So first, you need to determine which functions affect um, basically the, the loop bounds because uh, as we saw before, there, were, there was also a function called get entry and the reinforcement agent uh, should not be calling that. It, it would be just wasting sort of time calling that one because it's not going to affect the loop bounds inside of some entries. And the solution to detect which functions affect the loop bounds uh, that we are uh, taking is to do reverse taint analysis and then forward taint analysis. So um, for those of you who are not familiar, taint analysis is a form of information flow analysis where you first uh, taint or tag a memory location, for example, a variable X. Then you trace 
the flow of um, that tainted uh, value through the execution of your smart contract functions. And you determine which instructions or which other memory values are affected by uh, that tainted uh, part. The information flow may be explicit, where you have a direct uh, assignment, uh, memory transfer. And it could also be implicit, where um, different uh, values in memory depend indirectly on your tainted value. For instance, if you have a branch condition, like this uh, if uh, x greater than zero and inside of the if and else branches you have other values like other variables like a and b those variables will be uh, uh, implicitly tainted by x so then we do the reverse taint analysis on that function we slightly modified this function some entries um, to also include an implicit taint, implicit taint uh, example here Or can you still hear me? You were breaking up, um, but now you're back. Okay. Um, so here we modified the sum entries function a bit um, in order to uh, show that. Um, can you still hear me? Okay. To show to show that there is a possibility of an implicit taint, uh, we start from the uh, loop um, at the uh, at the close to the bottom. And we taint the bound uh, variable, and we go up. We go in the reverse, and we see that um, first the the n uh, the variable n is tainted by bound because there's an explicit assignment, and also the length of the entries list is also tainted um, explicitly. And uh, we also have an implicit tainting of those variables, but since they're already explicitly tainted, then it basically uh, they're tainted. We also have a taint of the constant zero. So that instruction is also tainted where bound is assigned a zero value. And uh, based on this analysis, we can say that, okay, the function, uh, the input of the function sum entries is tainted. And also the state variable entries is tainted. That is the length of this state variable, uh, state variable is tainted. So once we, once we determine this, we can do a forward taint analysis where we just um, taint the entries dot length, and we start executing uh, each function to see which instruction which instructions in which function uh, may affect the entries length. And um, we see that only the add entry function affects the length of the entries list. The get entries functions does not. Therefore, the uh, reinforcement uh, aid, uh, learning agent can just um, try to call this function before it tries to see if it if it ran out of gas using that uh, some entries function which is not shown here due to uh, lack of space so the question uh, here towards the end is like okay we took this approach we did all this stuff we ran the reinforcement learning agent so what do we do once we know where the out of uh, gas error occurs uh, i already hinted towards the answer we basically fix um, the the code and fixing could look something like this uh, if if uh, removing the loop is not an option you could have a require statement close to the the beginning of the code which basically signals that uh, the parameter that you or the parameters that you provided uh, will lead to an out of gas error uh, the second example which i showed you could also uh, go for fixing actually after you've done all the computations you can add this require statement which is easier than necessary than, than checking uh, values for different uh, inputs and uh, the third example uh, is also interesting because we're not placing the require statement inside of the function which has the loop like not inside of some entries but we're placing it inside of the function that affects the the length of the the loop so inside of the add entry function and of course these values are just like um, um, preliminary preliminary values like they're not they're just mocks um, you can also not just hard code the values in there but you can also um, let it be settable by the contract owner such that if uh, there's a fork or, or the gas limit is increased 
they can adapt this or if the, the opcode cost of uh, the cost of the opcode changes these values can be changed as well in conclusion just want to say that um, probably no loops cause out of gas errors in smart contracts and these can lead to uh, frozen and hence lost funds detecting such um, problems is uh, quite easy with state-of-the-art tools however determining exactly when they would occur with which inputs is harder and we're taking the approach of uh, fuzzing with uh, reinforcement learning and taint analysis to generate um, the inputs needed for an out of gas error faster and in a more general way and yeah we're, we're using taint analysis to guide uh, fuzzing that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so now first to the people in the room. Um, if you have any questions for Sebastian, use the raise your hand feature so that I can see that you would like to ask something. And to the people in the live stream, we know you're lagging behind, so we will wait for you for uh, one minute and you can put your question in the GitHub chat. Yes, Jocelyn. Hey, Sebastian. Nice talk. Hi, thank um, you. What tool are you using? Um, for for this, uh, uh, you mean for reinforcement learning or which part? For, for the whole approach, like... Uh... Oh, we're, we're building a custom tool for this one. Okay. Okay, so it's uh, everything built into us. Uh, well, it's going to be published, but um, it's basically the joint effort between the university and Quantstamp, and uh, we're going to release the, the code once the paper is accepted. Okay. 